In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, our one true God. Amen. Greetings, everybody. My name is Archbishop Gregory, head of the Synod of the Genuine Orthodox Church of America. And we are making this video for, for people who are searching for the truth and are confused when they see so many different old calendar groups and want to know what is the difference be between this one and that one. And so this one we are going to concentrate on the biggest group, I guess you could say, which is that of Archbishop Hellenicus of Achia. Now, and we have a picture up here of him. Where does this character come from is what we want to find out. And what kind of character does he possess? Is, does he have an orthodox mentality? Or he has some other agenda? Because St. Paul tells St. Timothy and Titus that a bishop must be of sound mind, mm -hmm. blameless, blameless, holy, just, so, and have good behavior. So let's find out where this bishop comes from. <clears throat> Well, first of all, you should know he comes from the Matthewites. The Matthewites is another group in Greece who stem from one priest monk called Matthew from the Holy Mountain, a simple monk. And I should say more or less he's a simpleton, which the devil used as a plaything. Because... In 1924, when the calendar was changed, he developed his own theology and said that the grace of the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, left all the churches that had accepted the new calendar, or in communion with the new calendar in 1924. Except the person who ordained him in 1935. That was okay in his. So he had this mad desire to become a bishop. And he did it. And he had this theology, which the Matthewites have which doesn't, does, there's no sense in it. <clears throat> there were holy people living at that time. Metropolitan Anthony Kabovitsky put up a picture of Metropolitan Assi. He was the most renowned high rock in all the world. And that's not an understatement. He says that the teaching of the Matthewites is foolishness. Changing the calendar doesn't drive away the Holy Spirit. And then in Greece, the great high rock metropolitan Chrysostom of Florina put up a picture of metropolitan. He said the same thing, but he had to deal with Greeks who were infected with the idea and the poison of Matthew, who said just the opposite. And then they had holy monks, par excellence, Father Joseph, the Hesychist. He had the same. He was at one time affected by the old calendar fanatics exactly like uh, Matthew, and he split from the New Calendar Church. 
and remained with these what they call zealots. Matthewites are zealots without mind. But then after prayer, it was revealed to him by God that he made a mistake. And these people are in error. And so he went back and commemorated the Patriarch of Constantinople, who was New Calendar, but he, of course he stayed with the Old Calendar. So he had all these examples, but Matthew did not listen. Okay. Then we go to 1979. What happened in 1979? Eight Achaemenides from the Synod of the Genuine Orthodox Christians of Greece. At that time, the head was, the, the Archbishop was Archbishop Axentius. And by this time, a lot of Matthewites repented and left Matthew. And where did they go? They went to the Jonian Orthodox Christians of Greece who were in communion with the Russian church abroad because we had ordained their bishops. And one of the bishops was Callistus. Put up a picture of Metropolitan Callistus. He was a simple and I would say holy man. And he was, I believe, nagged and nagged by his disciple, the future archbishop whom this video is about, uh, Father Kalinikos, that he would along with another bishop, not tell the Archbishop Axentius, but go ahead and ordain eight Archimandrites. Of course, he was one of them. And the first one was Archimandrite Cyprian of Philly, who had his own monastery, and he had a mad desire to become a bishop because he was rejected by the new calendars, and he was rejected by Accentius. And now he, he and Callinicus incited the poor old man, Callistus. And you know, when someone is an old man and he's constantly pushed and pushed and pushed, and you break him. And he falls, although if he was given opportunity to think and rationalize, he wouldn't have done it, but he did it with this Anthony, and they ordained eight Archimandrites. This is uncanonical, but Callinicus, whom this video is about, did it, or accepted this uncanonical ordination. Then what happened? when the archbishop found out, what? How can this be? At first he couldn't believe it. And then when he was, oh, yes, that's what happened. So he deposed all of them, not only the ones who did the ordination, but those who were quote-unquote ordained uncanonically. And one of them was, yes, Kalinikos, whom we are making this video about. Eventually, they all understood we made a mistake. All those who did something uncanonically. And they went back to their archbishop, um, probably were weeping and said, please accept us, we're sorry. And so he accepted them which is another question. Can a person who is canonically, properly, justly deposed be reinstated? And I think St. Photius the Great 
said, once deposed, always deposed. Because you depose a person and you make him, if he's a monastic, you take him from being a bishop to a simple monk. And now, according to the church, he's a simple monk. So what are you going to do if you're going to re reinstate him? He's a simple monk. You're going to have to ordain him? Mm. This is the question that Archbishop Anthony of Los Angeles told me because he was against reinstating those who are deposed. <clears throat> okay, so that's the sec. Well, that's a mark on his illustrious career, shall we say. Then, as he was a bishop in the synod of the genuine Orthodox Christians of Greece, Oxentius died, and the new archbishop was Chrysostom Chiusis. Do we have a picture of him? Yes. Okay. And this man, along with his, his sidekick, Kalinikos, which he made the secretary of the synod. And they had a desire, an evil desire, seeing that they were getting donations and they had to split the donations between 12 bishops in the synod. So they got together with six bishops and said, come on, let us get together and let us make a corporation with the same name as our synod. But we will be the only names on the corporation and we will fundle the big checks into our corporation and in our bank with our names. And we won't tell the other six bishops. And they had the audacity to accomplish it, to do this fraud. Well, as God willed, it was made known that in the government of Greece, there were two corporations with the same name. But only one corporation had 12 bishops and another corporation just had six with the Archbishop and Metropolitan Kalidnikos, whose reputation we're making this video about. <clears throat> and so it became known. And the next synod meeting, the six bishops gathered now, and they sat down. And they said, the first order of business is, what is the meaning of this? Because we have just learned that there is another corporation registered with the, uh, with the government, with our name, but it only has U6. What's the meaning of this? And immediately, the archbishop said, Meeting is over, we're all going home. When the Archbishop dismisses the Synod meeting, it's over. No, there's no discussion. Every, the six bishops got up and walked away and never came back. That, in my estimation, is called a schism. What did they do? They kept the corporation going and they rented the floor underneath where the synod met so they could have the same address. And that's how it is even till now. Same building, same address, just different floor. 
That, in my estimation, is a schism. It's not a schism over faith, but it's a schism over what is ethical. St. Paul says not a bishop should not be given over to sordid lucre. But this is what these people did. And because they never said, come on, okay, forgive me, or repented and came back to the other six, they eventually fell out of the church. They became not only schismatics, but heretics. Now, how did that happen? Well, in 1998, 1998, these six wanted to ordain the notorious Paul of Astoria in the United States. How do I say he's notorious? Because he holds the theology of Cyprian. Cyprian, who is one of the eight that was ordained with Callinicus. This Cyprian never repented and came back to the archbishop. He started his own synod. He started his own synod. And he called that synod the synod of resistors. Uh, who knows what he's resisting? But his theology was that the new calendars, whom we, in 1983, anathematized for heresy, he said, they have the grace of God, they are part of the church, they're only an ailing part of the church. We issued an anathema against them, our Genuine Orthodox Church of America. Back then, this was a novel, a novel teaching. How can someone say that, even after the Russian Church abroad anathematized them? Yes, this this Cyprian was getting a lot of money from the new calendars. So he didn't want to stifle that by saying that they are heretics. He would let them come into his church and he would give them communion. Well, Paul of Astoria did the same thing. Paul of Astoria was serving the new calendars. He even admitted it. He even admitted, I am serving the children of Patriarch Bartholomew. And all of a sudden, Kalinikos and uh, the Archbishop Chrysostom Chiusis wanted to ordain this person as part of their synod. And there was, of course, rejection by the people, but they didn't care. So how should we do this, they thought. Okay, if someone comes and yells on axios during the ordination, it's going to be very embarrassing for us because they'll have all kinds of proof that this man gives communion to heretics, just like Cyprian of Frali, the guy down the street, whom already they had deposed for the same teaching. So how can we do this? We'll do this at night, they said. We'll do this at night. And where will we do it? We will do it in the cathedral of Metropolitan Kalinikos, whose reputation we're talking about in this video. So he and the archbishop gathered together, called Paul from New York and said, come, 
and we will ordain you in secret so no one will object. Now, that's against the canons. It's so bizarre. And they did it, and how many people were there? Just eight. But someone took a picture. And here is the picture of, I hope we have it, let's put it up, of Paul after he was ordained. He looks, he looks like he's going to explode. Okay. Now we come to 2012. So now, by this time, Callinicus and Cusus have a very bad reputation of being very sympathetic to the heresy of Cyprian. They don't they don't condemn it because they do it secretly. Even in Greece, they do the same thing. They open the doors of their churches and certain churches, if not many, and if a new calendar comes up, they don't ask them first, where are you from? Who, where do you, who's your bishop or anything. Just as long as he has, or if the person opens their mouth, they give them communion because they're coming to give money. They're donating to the church. So now, as time goes on, Pusis dies. And the new archbishop, who's going to be the new archbishop? Well, it's Kalinikos whom this video is about, they make him the new archbishop. And in 2012, what happens? The Holy Orthodox Church of North America, called Hokna, has disintegrated to some extent, and many of the monks leave the monastery in Boston, and they have been Yes, they have been deposed by the Russian church abroad. For what? For homosexuality. For celebrating with homosexual, or those who have been deposed for homosexuality. The canon says if you can celebrate, serve liturgy with those who are deposed, you, you are deposed too. So all of these finally realize that they are a laughing stock, and they leave the monastery because the abbot admits to his evil doing. So they leave, and where are they going to go? They're, they're ordained priests and bishops, even though they have the stain on them, blood on their hands, or whatever. Well, there's only one place to go who will receive us, and that's Kalinikos of the genuine Orthodox Christians of Greece. And they go to Paul, who was ordained and accepted, or who was accepted by them. And the Archbishop now is Kalinikos, and he opens his arms and come. Forget about repentance. Forget about an epitemia. We won't. Just, just join us. And they did it. So this is, this is the character of this person. Is that against the canons? Yes, it is. How can you receive someone? They left for not only homosexuality, but name-worshipping. And believing that there is repentance after death. Sort of like an origin type heresy. And they are received by Kalenikos. Then we come to 
2013, a year later, the very Cyprian in Greece, who is notorious for being the first open ecumenist among the old calendars, he dies after being six or seven years in a coma. Not necessarily the proper way that a bishop should repose, if he was a bishop. So, what happens? <clears throat> His synod of resistors, they're called resistors, um, are shocked because the body of their leader, whom they say is a saint, I don't think they even started making icons of him before he died. Oh, my Lord. Yes. They were so mixed up in their brains. They started making icons of him. And they had an even a special name they called him. What, what was the name they called him? Oh, Pateras. The Father. Oh, Pateras. Well, he died in a coma, and his body turned into a rock. His mouth was open, gaped open, and no one could shut it, because it was like a rock. In Orthodox iconography, when the devil comes to rip the soul out of a man, it rips it out of that man's mouth. And probably, most likely, it stays open. And it shocked all of his Cyprianite bishops. They did this burial, and there he was. No one even wanted to look at him. They were so shocked at, at his appearance. So they said, OK, after they buried him, what in the world is going to happen to us, his sinner said. And they devised, all right, let's go back and join the church that deposed us. Yes, that's, yes, that's Archbishop Kalinikos' church. So, with one accord, the whole synod came. And offered to join their church. Now, Polinicus, of course, not being, being an honorable person and knowing his own history, how he accepts everybody, making the Ark of Salvation a barge of garbage, he takes them heretics as they are, and we wait and see, is there going to be a proclamation of repentance, of renouncing the stupid and crazy theology that Cyprian espoused, that you cannot break communion or call someone a heretic unless there is a council. So he, they take the history of orthodoxy and throw it right out the window. Forget what St. Nicholas did. Um, uh, St. Peter of Alexandria to Arius. What St. Cyril did to Nestorius to all the iconoclasts, on and on and on, every, every heresy was condemned immediately. The canon says when someone preaches a heresy, they don't say, if your bishop preaches a heresy, they don't say wait for a council to depose him. They say break 
immediately with him. Break immediately. If he is preaching bareheadedly a heresy that is condemned by a council, you're supposed to separate from him immediately. But no, 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 no. Cyprian says, no, 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 no. We can't separate from the worst heresy that ever hit the Orthodox Church that's already been condemned by the Synod of the Genuine Orthodox, uh, of the... Um, uh, of the Russian Orthodox Church abroad under Metrop the Saint Metropolitan Philaret. No, 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 no. We have to wait for another council. A council of us, they would say. And that's their new theology. And when they joined Kalinikos, who's we're talking about in this video, they come up with this new teaching. They're not going to condemn uh, anybody, unless there's a pan-Orthodox old calendar synod or council meeting to condemn. There has to be a council to condemn. So they adopted Cyprian's theology. And that's the theology now I hear of the genuine Orthodox Christians of Greece under Archbishop Kalinikos. <clears throat> very, very sad. So they went into communion with the Kyprianites. They had a union with heretics. They say Kyprianites, the Synod of Resistors says, the heretics have grace, and only a council of all the orthodox can condemn ecumenism. So then Kalinicus went in communion with the Romanian Orthodox Church under Vlasios. They were Kyprianites also. So I went to them to see if they would repent. Now, their bishop, one of their bishops, not Vlasius, he wasn't there. They acknowledged, I can't believe this, he acknowledged, yes, we made a mistake by going into communion with Cyprian. But, but, if we repent, it will be too embarrassing. It will be too embarrassing for us in front of all the people we have in Romania and all our donors to switch our allegiance from this heretic Cyprian or even now Kalindikos, it would be too embarrassing. So we're just going to stay here and jeopardize our salvation. Then the old calendar church that was in communion with Cyprian of Bulgaria joined with Kalinikos. So now Kalinikos is getting all of these synods that were in communion with Cyprian, and they're following the Cyprianite bishops to Kalinikos. The Bulgarian bishops, uh, the Bulgarian bishop, there's one there. Photius is his name, and he's noted as being the great deceiver, the expert deceiver. Because he's the one that came to America when our Russian church abroad was contemplating going into communion with this Metropolitan Cypriot in 1994. And they invited him to speak before the Synod. And he convinced our bishops the liberal bishops, for sure, were probably already convinced to go in communion with Cyprian in 1994. And then the group of Agathangelos joins Cyprian. After all, he's a Cyprianite. All those in communion with him joined him to go to 
uh, Kalinikos. And what can we say about Agathangelos? In the late 90s, after he was ordained a bishop, a historian, a church historian, made note the young Bishop Agathangelos displayed his ignorance of Orthodox ecclesiology by publishing an article, publishing an article proclaiming the validity of the sacraments outside the church. Quote, the grace of the Holy Spirit, the grace of the sacraments, resides also with the Roman Catholics, the Monophysites, and in part with all believers and Protestants who have not violated the formula in performing the sacraments. That's the wisdom of Agathangelos. So, it's no wonder he became a full-blown Cyprianite. His synod was ordained by Cyprianite bishops. And he says, okay, what's the difference? I'm a Cyprianite. I'm going to I'm going to say, and he says publicly, I might as go all the, go all the way and re- denounce and renounce. And they're calling them the Russian Church abroad. I'm going to renounce the 1983 anathema that was pronounced by the Russian Church abroad under the holy and saintly Philaret of New York. The anathema against ecumenism, this man is renouncing publicly. So this man wants to join Kalinikos. And Kalinikos says, okay, come. Everybody else is here. Everybody, 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 everybody other Cypriotite is joined with me and we have accepted his his uh, theology that's saying you must have a council to condemn condemn a heretic. If he's preaching heresies before a council, he still he still has the grace of the Holy Spirit. Ah, oh, crazy. So the question is, before I close, do the illegitimate know that they are illegitimate? And the answer is yes. yes. And how do they mitigate their illegitimacy? By rubbing elbows with other bishops in some kind of venue. And they devise this venue. We must have a pan-Orthodox old calendar council. And if we all get together, then we will condemn ecumenism, condemn the... uh, all the new calendarists or whatever, and we'll feel really great, and everybody will think that we're legitimate after all. We're part of the council, this pan orthodox, whereas in fact, they are not even bishops. So, a word of warning to all those who are looking for the truth. Don't even imagine that you can go with the Archbishop of the Genuine Orthodox Christians of Greece. They are the illegitimate group among the old calendars. And they are a scandal. There's no other a scandal to Orthodoxy. So all the Cyprianites all the little churches that joined Cyprian, the Romanians, the Bulgarian, the Russians, they all joined Kalinikos, and he received them all with no repentance at all. Something, and they proclaimed them as six sister churches, sister churches as if their theology 
was the same. And it probably, it, you might as well say it is the same because they both do the same thing. Give communion to heretics. And everybody should stay away from Galinicus and all of these groups. And the question is again, if you have a heretical church that's right next to you, is it better for you to go to that church and have the convenience of falling out of bed and going to a heretical church? Or should you belong to the true church, which is halfway around the world or halfway across the country, or not very close? And the answer should be obvious for all. You have no business being with a heretical church. You should say, I don't want to be found dead with a heretical church. But whether I am in the North Pole or next to a true Orthodox church, I'm in the church. And that's what God looks for, faithfulness. And this is what the, the saints affirm, especially we know from the life of St. John the Almsgiver. Okay, thank you all for listening. And right at the end now, we are going to put the anathema against the Kyprianites. And the anathema, which was issued by our synod, says to the, to the deposed Metropolitan Cyprian Consumbus, the exorcist, the propagator of demonic teaching, and to all those who follow him, who teach that those who fall into heresy are still part of the Church of Christ, and that their mysteries are grace-filled, and who teach that the Church of Christ is divided into two parts, one ailing with heresy and one healthy without heresy, and thus maintain that the holy body of Christ not only can be divided, but also be infected with the disease of falsehood, who oppose the Apostle Paul, who says that the Holy Church is a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, and who, and who commune heretics and have therefore succumbed to the heresy of ecumenism, anathema. So, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and thank you for listening. Amen.